this Velcro. If you guys knew the nonsense that we go through to record this show, wait, time out. What's wrong with the bear? He can live right there. Football. Can you see, can you see the Duke? There's the Duke. There we go. There's nothing wrong with Mr. Cuddles or whatever the hell his name is, but it's just not our MO. That's the Hulk. That's the Hulk. You call him the Hulk? I don't call him the Hulk. Who calls him the Hulk? Valentino. Mm. Okay. I get that. He's four. Say something. Yeah. <laughs> Can't. After you smash that subscribe button, go over to sportscaster.com where you will see us every Saturday morning at 8 a.m. I don't know. I'm not really sure when this episode's going to air. However. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a fun one. I'm still mad. Why? From what happened. Oh, come on. I'm still come mad. Come on. Let it go. Hey, dude. Uh, you know what? Let it no go. One was... Let it go. So let me get this straight. <laughs> so what you're telling me is... That's acceptable, but Cuddles isn't? <laughs> I am in, in, insanely intrigued in the fact that you... Uh, a point you brought up to me. What if... Yeah. What if the Buffalo Bills never traded up for J.P. Lossman yeah. in the 2004 draft? You go back and you talk about the drought and everybody... Oh, the drought, the drought, the drought. That, that move single-handedly... That one move could have changed everything. I mean, there's a lot of moments in Bills history you look at. Should, what if the Bills didn't fire Wade Phillips, right? Yes. What if the Bills uh, didn't draft Sammy Watkins? Well, there's a whole series of these that we can do. But I think starting with JP is the best one to start with because there's so much going on, and it was mm. right in the heart of you know when that drought was really on its way because the Bills – we're in a similar situation to where the Bills defense is right now. Let's say the Bills go 3-12 and 12 this year and fire Sean McDermott. Where are we? Yeah. We're not too far off from where the Bills no, were. No, that was... Take a look at the arcs, you know? Like, it's it's a fascinating conversation. So let's talk. So let's reset. Let's look. Let's go back. It was 2004. 2004 draft, which everyone will remember for Eli, Ben, and Philip Rivers. Yep. Okay, they, they came out that year, and the Bills essentially traded up for, like you said, Josh Rosen. Yeah, so the Bills trade up for the fourth quarterback off the board, right? And it's not like they traded up to 10, to 9. They didn't. They traded to 22 for the fourth quarterback off the board. And just to refresh everyone's memory, they gave up a second and a fifth in the 2004 draft mm -hmm. and a first in the 2005 draft. Right. So that's a, that's a haul for a quarterback. That's right? stupid. It looking back, not on getting it, into the teens, and you give away a next year's first rounder. Yeah, you think you're going to be a lot better than you are. Right. I mean, you look at what just look at what Casey gave up for Patrick Mahomes, right? Casey gave up a first the next year. That's what they gave up. But they got. They went to they, ten. They went to ten. Exactly. That's why. That's what I'm saying is they went to ten. The Bills traded all that to get to 22 for the fourth QB off the board, but. The thing that a lot of people forget is the Bills already had a pick in that draft. They passed on Lossman. They passed on him at 13. To take da -da -da, Lee, Lee Evans. Evans. That's right. Why you draft a run why you draft a wide receiver with no quarterback, I'll never understand. But let's let's kind of back. When you have him. Josh Reed and Eric Moulds already there. Yeah. And you draft a wide receiver 13th. Well, they just lost was that when they just lost Peterless Price? Did they have they lost him the year they drafted Reed, I believe. Josh Reed. No. Okay. Okay. So let's let's try to hit the reset button once yeah. again really let's, quick. Let's so, go back. so what we've covered so far is that we're trying to examine how much different would the Buffalo Bills have been had they not traded up for JP Lossman. Okay. So in the 2004 draft, obviously Eli goes number one to San right. Diego. I'm not going there. Yep. Rivers goes four. Roethlisberger goes ten, nine, Ish. ten. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Uh, so the Bills trade up to 22. They give da the Dallas Cowboys their second, the fifth, and next year's first to go to 22. Right. Uh, and they were around 47-ish. Their pick. Yeah. So, so they passed. So by the time the pick came to the Bills, I think they were kind of hoping that Roethlisberger would still be there 
I think they were kind of hoping that somebody was still going to be there, right? Mm -hmm. Because they but, clearly valued Lee Evans over J.P. Lossman. But I think we got to backtrack just a little bit more because we have to set the stage for where the team was. What happened in 2003? Where were they? Yeah. What, what were they doing in 2004 that prompted them to trade next year's first to get the fourth quarterback off the board? Which is, I mean, you look at Josh Rosen now and you're like, oh, okay. You know, like, mm -hmm. yeah, this, is, this is dicey territory, yes. right? And we've seen this happen before. We've seen teams take the fourth QB off the board in the first round. It's like Cade McNown. Like, all right. Depends where they go. Did and you know, Because did Trey you know, White was the fourth corner. Right. So yeah. it's, that it's, being. It's a fascinating exercise. Yes. So if you want to take a look at it, in 2003, the Buffalo Bills had the uh, scoring defense considered uh, it was fifth in the league in scoring defense, yet they were 30th out of 32 in offense. This coming a year after they had just acquired Drew Bledsoe in 2002, where he broke all of Kelly's single season record, or majority of yeah. them. And then the next year, he wasn't doing very well. Um, so that year, Craig Williams ended up getting fired. Yep. All right. So once again, you had not a GM change, but a head coaching change. Right. Because Malarkey Donahoe, comes in. And Donahoe was still. He was still there. Yeah. So right. from 2003 to 2004, now you're changing philosophies. You got rid of a defensive-minded head coach whose defense placed fifth in, in scoring defense. Mind you. <coughs> Proceed. The AFC East at that time was loaded. Mm -hmm. Brady had just won a Super Bowl. Yep. They were, in 2004, I'm saying 2004 statistics, after the draft had happened, the Bills were still in fifth. Oh, I'm sorry, 2003. I'm sorry, 2003. The Bills were still in fifth. Yeah. Uh, Miami was eighth. The Jets were, I think, third. Mm -hmm. and, my, and, and the Patriots were number one in scoring defense. So the AFC East had the defense locked down. Right. What you needed in that division was you needed to score points against everyone else. Right. And then just kind of squeak out games in there. So you have your defenses set. So you get rid of your defensive mind and head coach, and you, and you bring in a, a Malarkey, who's been an offensive guy. Um, so he wants to get his quarterback in there as fast as possible. Right. However, you're trading up from 47 to 22 to get J.P. Lossman, who is the fourth quarterback off. He would have fell to you. Like, who are you jumping at that point? That's need, that needs a quarterback. Right. Uh, you're trading up to 22. Now, you're telling me that the teams that finished in the top 10 that year did not have quarterbacks? Are you serious right now? Right. You're skipping teams that all have. Right. Um, and, and, and the ones that did, three already left. Mm -hmm. Three already went off the board. So that being said, it was kind of a move that was a, a very big head scratcher at the time and now and really like you said sent the buffalo bills into a into a serious nosedive that ended up re right. them recycling players and getting good getting, they, they acquired really good talent over the, the, the duration of the drought however they had to ship them all away i mean you take a look at what happened after that right so the bills trade up for jp lossman at 22. Mm -hmm. seattle was right behind them the rams were right behind rams took steven jackson Remember that monster? That guy was an animal. He was, then, a, he was looking, so frustrating in fantasy because he never scored touchdowns. Never. Never scored touchdowns. Oh, he's got 22 next, carries for 90 yards and no touchdowns. Well, oh, here's, here's where it goes, right? The very next quarterback off the board doesn't happen Keeps until... Keeps growing. Yeah, Keeps growing. Doesn't happen until... Oh, my God. I'm in the fourth round. Keep going. Luke McCown goes to the Browns in the fourth round, 106th pick. So did they? were they worried that they were going to lose J.P. Lossman to the Browns? Well, that's what kind of gets <clears throat> me. Yeah, that's what kind of gets me is that the Browns had already made their pick, and the Browns didn't have another pick. The Browns' next pick would have been... I mean, the Browns are perennially looking for a quarterback. The Browns' next pick would have been 59. So that doesn't even make sense. They could have stayed and still been in front of the Browns. Yeah, so it's disappointing. Yeah. So what you what you take out of this is the Bills gave a, a second and a fifth, and the next year's first. Then, a, and the following year, the 2005 draft, mm -hmm. right? The Bills ended up not doing terribly well. Right. So Bledsoe leaves. Bledsoe was gone. Yeah. yeah. The 2004 season, he was there for 02, 03, and 04. Right. He leaves. You just drafted your quarterback. Why not? Mm -hmm. He goes to where the Bills gave their picks. 
goes, goes to, to Dallas. Dallas. He goes to Dallas. Now, Dallas holds the 13th and the 20th pick in the 2005 draft. And the 13th would have been the Bills pick. No, the 13th was their, was oh, Dallas that was their pick. pick. Okay. Oh, okay. So you trade him to Dallas, which they weren't very good. No. All right, that's why you trade with a team because you don't think they're going to be very good. So the Bills end up getting the 20th pick overall. Let me just rewind a little bit. With the if the Bills stay with their second round pick and didn't trade up for Lossman, well, who they could have got was Nick Hardwick. Yeah. Now, if you guys aren't familiar with Nick Hardwick, he ended up playing 11 years with Philip Rivers in San Diego. The same year Rivers was drafted, Hardwick was drafted in the second round. Yeah. At the cur- at the time, the Buffalo Bills had a 29 year old Trey Teague right. playing center, mm-hmm. and you had two first rounders in Ruben Brown and Mike Williams playing right. for the team. I know Williams doesn't have a very good history in, in, in Buffalo. However, if you're thinking about getting your quarterback, do what San Diego did. Draft the center with it. Right. Um, now, I'm not saying, and that's not to, that's not to kind of, you know, poo-poo on the, on the legacy no. of Eric Wood. No, 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 no. Normally, you don't draft a center in the first round. However. Like, or especially as early as the Bills took Wood. But here's the problem. Wood was taken 28th overall mm-hmm. in the first round. Yeah, Wood was drafted in 2009. 2009. So yeah. you're talking about a difference in. of five years. Yeah, so you lived with, what, Jeff Hangardner and Trey Teague? Like, you kind of were in center purgatory for a little bit. But my point being, and then here is the icing on the cake would have been for me. You stay where you are. You don't trade up. You don't trade up at Dallas. You stay where you are. Now, there's many other factors. I understand that. But this is we're talking about hypotheticals here, so... You stay where you are. You take Nick Hardwick. Mm-hmm. You got two two other former first rounders and a second rounder. You have a line that's pretty good. All right, that's that's starting to form there. Right. You got Bledsoe for another year. Fine. Mm-hmm. You know you're only gonna have him for another year. He's end up being 31, 32 at the time. Okay, we'll we'll live with that. The following year, now you have the 20th pick overall. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is it's not as bad as Dallas. Do you know who was taken 24th overall in the 20, 2005 draft? Talk to me. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, exactly. You're telling me that if the Buffalo Bills would have stayed where they were, mm-hmm. didn't trade up with Dallas, and in the 2004 draft, let's say, say they stay with Evans. Yep. They get Lee Evans. You got Eric Moulds, Josh Reed, and Lee Evans. Now you have Nick Hardwig. Mm-hmm. The second year that Hardwick is going to be under center, right. you draft an Aaron Rodgers with the 20th pick well, overall. Well, and that's the thing, right? So Bledsoe's year was such a disaster in 2004. Yes. Right? It was See, so bad. You were getting rid of him regardless. It didn't matter. 03 like, and 04 was bad. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is you're getting rid of him regardless, right? So did the did the bad year in 03 prompt the drafting of Lossman in 04? Well, I think more of the new head coach said, I need my guy. And this is pretty common in the NFL. You New head coach, they want their guy. Look what just happened in Arizona. New head coach, they want their guy. That's how that's they ended up with Josh Rosen. That's an extreme case, But that's though, how that... they ended up with Josh Rosen in the first place. Which is odd because they didn't change GMs there. No. In, in Arizona. Well, Kinda... they lost Carson Palmer, but Arizona and Bruce Arians just never addressed the backup quarterback situation ever. Well, he had Stan. Stan followed him everywhere. That's what he I was mean. with him in, just, Ari- yeah, in uh, never, Indianapolis. And yeah, never, just nothing. Just never addressed that position ever. So Arizona was in a rough spot, so you expected them to draft a quarterback, right? But they ended up with Josh Rosen. It's That's what happened. They ended up with Rosen. The Bills had the ammo to move around. Arizona didn't. But... Um, you take a look at going back to 2003, 2004. Had the Bills said, you know what, this year with Bledsoe, it's an aberration. No big deal. Let's roll into 04. We'll be fine. Let's sit where we are in the draft. Let's take Lee Evans. Let's take our center. Let's rebuild this team from the middle through, right? Because the defense was close. The defense, defense was, was solid. Close. You had Takeo Spikes, London Fletcher. In their, in their th- early 30s. Yeah, Were in they the early 30? Th- you had, well, no, they weren't. They weren't even 30 yet. Oh, and then you had... Oh, uh, when Fletcher went out and played for like you another had the, decade. You had the massive humanity in, um, in uh, Sam Adams yep. and Pat Williams in the middle. Yep. Who, when they left, when Pat Williams left, he played for the Vikings for like another six years. Yeah. I don't he know. Did. On a guessing. very dominating defensive line. Nate Clemens, mm-hmm. who you don't like because Ohio State. Yeah. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, Kirk Coleman. Thanks a lot, Ohio State. <laughs> Well, listen, you can't trick me. You can't trick me. I know Kirk Coleman's from Ohio State, for those of you that are keeping score at home. But you had Winfield and Clemens mm-hmm. and Malloy. Yeah. And you had a very solid tequila. I mean, all those guys there 
were solid. Yep. You had your defense in place. Didn't matter what kind of scheme. If you tried to bring in a 3-4 scheme, all right, it would have been kind of tough, but you still had Sam Adams there. Right. Well, I think that's why they brought in Malarkey, right? Because he's supposed to be this offensive guy. The oh, they brought in already, Malarkey. Yeah, right. they brought in Malarkey, all right. Uh, but no, but he's not a bad coach. No, he's I, not. But the defense was close. So, look at listen, we, you know. It was a wasted yeah. defense. Man. Right. But if you take a look at the points that Bill's defense gave up at the end of the season, they were giving up. What, they they gave, gave up massive ones. Well, they, no, the last few games last, they gave up massive ones. But yeah. in that middle that middle interim, they gave up. They lost games like 12-10, yeah. 17-13, mm-hmm. uh, like 10-7. Well, they were, what was it, half their games they gave up under 20 points? Half their, yes, half that's their games. That's awesome. Like, you're, six and you six. Win. Six games they gave up under 10. Yeah, that's You should I mean. win those games. Yeah, you have to win those games. But when your offense is 30th, which sounds very familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> sure does. You have a top flight defense and yeah. an offense that can't do anything. Yeah. Not comparing it to today's because I believe that the route that the Bills have taken right now is vastly different. Sure. It seems like there's a plan in place. Sure. Uh, and they're able to see down the road. If the Bills are able to see down the road, Aaron Rodgers might still be in Buffalo right now. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing, right? So th- there's something must have happened in 03 for the Bills to hit the panic button and say, we have a problem here. And it was the hiring of Malarkey. Had they kept Greg Williams for another season, right? Yes. Had they just stayed the course there, um, Aaron Rodgers very well could be a Buffalo Bill. And with weapons at the wide receiver With position. Nick Hardwick. And, right. and, and it changes the whole the whole dynamic of Buffalo. Mm-hmm. And if he's here, because he's still playing. Yeah. All right. Now, yeah. we don't know how much it benefited him. I think he was ready to come out. Yeah. I think he was ready to play as soon as he came out of college. But you never know. I mean, maybe learning. He sat for a couple years. Yeah. But Favre isn't a teacher. Favre didn't even know what a nickel defense was. No, but the, the tr- <laughs> thing is, Favre doesn't like practice. No. He doesn't practice. So, Rodgers was always taking snaps snaps at the ones. Yeah. If he went, if Rodgers went to Indianapolis and played under Manning, Manning takes every single rep. Right. Because he has to. Could you imagine? Because Nick Hardwick has proven himself. He played with Rivers, mm-hmm. so you don't know how well, how that dynamic worked out. But he plays as a center, starting center for eleven straight years yeah. with the same quarterback. Mm-hmm. He comes in here. He plays with Rodgers mm-hmm. and Reed, and mm-hmm. however many draft picks happen after that. Yeah. A, do you think Marshawn Lynch leaves? Marshawn just gets traded. Uh, I still think or so- even drafted. Because you got McGahee now at that point. Freddie's here. Imagine, imagine Rodgers with Freddie and them two being as cerebral as they am, as they are. Oh, man. How that dynamic would have played out. You think about man. other wide receivers. Sammy Watkins then becomes a viable piece to trade up for, even if you're in that position. Right, because you have a QB. Because you have a quarterback. Yeah. All right. EJ Manuel never happens. Yep. Um... Which is all right with me, because you look at the defensive talent that came out that year when Manuel was drafted. Yeah, yeah, that was a tough sell. That um, was a tough one. There's a lot of things that don't happen. There's oh god. All right, let, I'll just, I'll leave this for the comment section. Yeah. All right. That's a good one. So listen, what are some things after watching this video? What are some things that you think? either happen or don't happen if the Buffalo Bills do not trade up with J.P. Lossman and they take Nick Hardwick with their second round pick and then the following year they draft Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. What, yeah. Do, you, what do you think the fallout of that is? Now, I know it's, we're going to have a, a broad spectrum. We're going to have – we have five Super Bowl rings. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rodgers and Brady in the same division for that long. Yeah. Rodgers battling Belichick that long. Mm-hmm. I, I want to know what your guys, what, what your guys take yeah. on this. The Buffalo Bills never traded up for J.P. Lossman. How's the Buffalo Bills' future written? 